<laughs> Greetings, my name is Vincent, and in this episode, let's transform this into this. Here at Bunker 6. Now, Games Workshop did make a lot of terrain for Adeptus Titanicus in plastic form, but Forge World also got involved by making some of their own resin structures and buildings. But today, we're going to be focusing specifically on the Manufactorum building, seen here. I have scoured the internet to look for how this building was painted, but I couldn't find anything, so we're going to improvise. Let's begin. Things that were done off camera were sanding down the vent holes because these are resin models, but they're very simple resin models. I also sprayed the model in this automotive primer off camera because I don't use it in my studio. It's very smelly. But here is the original artwork. We're not going to be making it look as green as I wanted it to be a bit more concrete looking. I mixed up some Vallejo model color London Grey, and I made sure that I focused in on all the areas where logically dust and dirt would accumulate over decades of this manufactorum sitting in my big city. So I'm not really focusing too much over the entire model, just areas where I think that things should be darker. And anyway, we're going to be highlighting things, doing oil washes later. So this is really just to set the tone a little bit, add some variation without going too crazy too early on. The eight caps on the edges of each side of the Manufactorum were then painted in a brassy copper colour. Once I had the copper and gold chosen, I still wanted to make sure that the copper was really punchy with a pre-shade of red, which I do later on, and kept the gold unshaded so it really cut through when the oil wash happened. The gold vents were actually the next thing I ended up painting, and I left these well alone until after the oil shade wash, which was going to be a burnt umber brown color. And so I didn't want to do too much shading to this gold section until that oil wash had gone on. I did want the top vents and the front and rear vents to be this really dark decayed metal because I wanted them to look like they were being overused and really exposed to the elements. Now the oil wash that will go on will end up drying and be almost like an orangey tone in between the vent crevices, but that's fine. It's almost like a reverse shade where the darkest points are the highest points, which are the metal parts and the deep parts are these dusty orange oil tones that cut through. And I think that's going to be a nice juxtaposition with everything that's happening on the copper and gold sections. The next step was to paint the hand wheels and the two pipes on the roof of the Manufactorum. We're just keeping it very simple here. We're not going to worry about any highlights or anything like that because I still want this to look quite greasy after the oil wash has been applied. The only thing that are going to get highlights in the silver department are going to be the shutter doors on the front and rear of the building after the oil wash has been applied. Prior to adding the oil wash across the entire building and the vents, I wanted to just make the copper sections a little bit more red, just so that cuts through the oil wash instead of making things too brown all over. Once I was happy with the red shading across all of the brass and copper parts, I moved on to adding a gloss varnish to the entirety of the model, doing three coats to make sure everything was sealed before we move on to the oil wash stage. Now, despite having painted quite a few models in the past couple of years in aid of this YouTube channel, my confidence with oil washes and just oils in general is still quite low. I don't really like taking the risk that often, especially when it comes to doing the cleanup process. I don't want to cut through the gloss varnish and start damaging the paint underneath or leaving it for too long and then I can't get the oils off. Just different things that worry me about these kind of processes. But in this particular instance, I think it's fine because it's terrain. And with terrain, you've got big, large, flat surfaces. And I had three more of these that I needed to paint anyway, so I wasn't particularly concerned if I made any mistakes on this one. Luckily, after everything had dried, and I did actually use a hairdryer too to let it dry, um, things looked like they were pretty flat and had pooled where I wanted them to pool. 
and when it came to doing the clean-up process, things were pretty painless. I got quite lucky, I think, but hopefully practice makes perfect. Now once the oil washes were dry entirely, which I left overnight, I moved on to doing the clean-up phase, where normally you're going to want to use mineral spirits with a Q-tip or a sponge and start just removing some of the oils where you don't want them generally, flat surfaces where such dirt and grime wouldn't be accumulating. Now when I first started getting into oil paints, I decided to buy the top end of the spectrum when it comes to oils and mineral spirits, but I've learned since then that you don't need the most expensive of stuff. I've just decided that I would use it seemed as I've already purchased it, but you can use bog standard oil paints and bog standard oil thinner. I think it will work just as fine for these kind of applications. Now, one thing when it comes to the particular oils that I'm using, they're designed specifically for models because they dry quicker apparently, but I don't think it makes too much of a difference when you're slathering an entire building in oil wash. But as you can see, I'm now just using a sponge for some broader areas. I was using the Q-tip for more minute areas, but now that I've got the sponge out, I'm just carefully removing larger sections that I don't think require any oil. Additionally, I would note that these oils come off really easily when you've got mineral spirits on your sponge or on your Q-tip or cotton bud. Just make sure that you go lightly with pulling the oils back off because you don't really want to have to reapply things if you don't have to because obviously that's going to take more time. Just less is more when it comes to taking the oils off, I would say. Once I was satisfied with how much oil I had pulled off of the building, I then resealed the entire paint job, this time with matte varnish. I used AK Interactive's matte varnish. I think it's fabulous, but you can use whatever matte varnish you can get your hands on. Now, although the exterior of the building was completely slathered in oil wash, I wanted some of the vents to have a black shade to them to imply that different type of dirt and muck is building up in these grills not just the environmental dust that would be accumulating around the building that was represented with the brown oil wash. And just to make the vents on the top even more deep and dirty, I added Nuln oil as well, just to really imply that these vents go much further into the building. Otherwise, if it's just got the burnt umber sitting on top, it doesn't really look like those vents are actual holes. And that's why the Nuln oil was added here. I decided to take the little mounds or mini domes above each of the shutter doors and turn them into little lights. In the original artwork these were not represented as lights or anything actually, they were just kind of painted over in grey. I wanted to add a little bit of visual interest here and it seemed like a good opportunity to do that. I decided to make these yellow lights and kept it really simple. I just added a black circle around the dome and then moved in with different variations of yellow tones going from dark to lighter, then adding a transparent layer over the black and the yellow layers to unify those two transitions a little bit better, and then adding a final white dot to imply a glassy finish to the light. The trick here is just to make sure that the yellow, as it gets brighter, becomes smaller and smaller the closer to the edge you go, making sure that the mid-tone is much more in the center and as I say, the brighter stages just get smaller and smaller the further to the edge that you go. Don't forget to add that white dot just to really imply the idea that this is a reflective surface. Now you don't have to do this transparent yellow layer that I'm doing, but it just seemed that the black to the yellow was a bit stark and this transparent layer just kind of almost acted like a wash and just smoothed things over a little bit. And there's that little white dot just to finish off the lights. Another part of the model that didn't have any representative painting added to it to suggest what it was in the official artwork was this keypad section. So I decided just like the light to give it its own little bit of painting just to once again sell the illusion that this is a part of the building that matters. And this is the keypad or a security apparatus section of the building. I'm just going to keep it really simple with a dab of white and then adding a green wash to imply that it's illuminated with some kind of green optics. 
Now one of the more fun and brainless parts of the painting process is doing the dry brushing. Just don't go too hard, I'm using an ivory paint here, and don't go to the full brightness of white, because I didn't want it to look too unrealistic. Ivory is just a little bit of an off yellowish white, it just looks a little bit more natural on a building like this I think. Just scraping across the edges, now I am scraping across some of those metallic sections too where that ivory paint is going to stick to, but it's not actually an issue because that dry brushing that's gone into places which you don't particularly want it to go to is not actually a problem because it's a good guide to show me where I need to actually add the highlights to the metallics later. Of course, if there's some ivory paint on a nub or a bolt or something, I can just add the metallic highlight and I've now fixed the problem. I'm using one of my favourite gold paints, this is the Games Workshop Retributor Gold. It's absolutely wonderful and it's going to be really good added over the top of these dull copper sections just to really make them pop. Now I could have done two coats but I decided to keep it a little bit dull instead of going too over the top because I still want it to look natural. These things aren't going to be particularly very shiny because this is a very old and heavy use building. So I'm just going slightly under what I would normally do, let's just say if it was a figurine. And so we're just going to be adding little bits here and there, not doing two coats, and just being sparing with everything that we're doing in the highlights department when it comes to the metallics. And away from the metallic golds and coppers, we're actually doing the same logic when it comes to the metallic silvers. As you can see here, I'm just sporadically adding patches of bright silver here to imply that these louvres are actually damaged and chipped rather than pristine and clean. The lower vents had barely any highlighting added to them. I really just wanted to have them sit back. I didn't want everything to have a sort of bright metallic pop to it. As you can see, it's very subtle. Now all that was left to do was add the highlights to these ridges on the shutter doors as you can see here. Of course, I made sure when I was cleaning the oil wash off the oil still sat under the ridges and now I'm just making sure the top of these ridges have this metallic silver finish to it, just to give it a more natural feel. And it was at this point that I felt the model was finished. On to the presentation. Thank you so much for watching until the end. That was the Forge World Manufactorum Bunker. I have three more of these to paint, but I'll be doing that off camera. But what I will be doing on camera is plenty more of the Forge World scenery, going to be breaking all of them up into their own separate episodes just to keep things nice and organized. If you're new here, please consider subscribing if this is kind of your thing. And if you're already subscribed, I really do appreciate the ongoing support. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Vincent, signing off from here at Bunker 6. Oh.